Hi, very good morning. I am Dr. Janak Patel, MD, General Physician. All my video lectures are mainly for educative purpose. In continuity with the previous lectures on neurology. Today we will be discussing on one of the very interesting short topic we call Horner syndrome. Very frequently asked in your theory, can be asked in your oral exams also and once in a while you might see a patient in your everyday practice. So Horner syndrome or also called as Bernard's Horner syndrome. We'll be discussing on the common heading like definition, etiology, etc. Now, Horner syndrome is a group of symptoms and signs which is due to damage to sympathetic system, particularly cervical sympathetic fibers. And it consists of meiosis, that is pinpoint pupil or pupillary constriction, Ptosis, that is partial ptosis, slight drooping of the eyelid because of the damage to the molar muscles. Anhydrosis, that is absence of sweating on the side where there is a damage. Anophthalmus, flushing of the face because of vasodilatation, because of increased blood flow. Absence of ciliospinal reflex and pupil does not dilate too. Cocaine, 4% cocaine drops. And there is a slight elevation of lower eyelid. We call it a reverse ptosis. These are all the components which you can see in a person with a Horner syndrome. But these three are the classical. That's why it is also labeled as palm. That is ptosis, anhydrosis and meiosis. There is also one way of description is called sample. S for sympathetic nerve fiber injury, A for anhydrosis, M for meiosis, P is for ptosis, L for loss of ciliospinal reflex, and E for anophthalmus. So it is anhydrosis, ptosis, meiosis, ciliospinal reflex, and anophthalmus. These are the most common findings which you will come across in Horner syndrome. So classical triad is ptosis, meiosis and anhydrosis. Along with that you can get a mild anophthalmus which is inward displacement of the eyeball, loss of ciliospinal reflex. Occasionally you can see that heterochromia that is ipsilateral iris is lighter color. If you see this too Sometimes you will see that the one iris color is little lighter or there is a different color and pupil is slow to dilate and slight elevation of lower eyelid that is called reverse ptosis. These are all the component of Horner syndrome. So sympathetic chain Injury, anhydrosis, meiosis, ptosis, loss of ciliospinal reflex and anophthalmus as we have already mentioned. There is something called as a reverse hornus where you get unilateral midriasis, flushing of the face, hyperhidrosis, transient sympathetic overactivity. It is seen in an early lesion involving sympathetic pathway to one eye. And it is also called as porphyrodopatic or called reverse hornus. Now depending upon where is the damage, it is put into central which is called first order, preganglionic that is second order neuron damage. If there is a damage to the third order neuron, it is called postganglionic and sometimes you can have mixture of the two. So if there is a damage here in this portion it is called first order neuron. If you get the damage that is what we call in the brain stem up to cervical spine it is called first order neuron. If out of the cervical spine 
if you get the damage that is called second order neuron and once it makes a synapse after that if you get a damage it is called third order neurons so depending upon where is the damage accordingly the finding may also change in case of Horner syndrome we are not going into tremendous detail regarding that but to understand the Horner syndrome you should understand that sympathetic fiber which starts from the autonomic nervous system center and it supplies cervical spine that is called ciliospinal center and from there the second order neuron will start which will turn around the subclavian will run along with the internal carotid artery that is second order neuron that will make a synapse in superior cervical ganglia and after making a synapse in a superior cervical ganglia it will run along the internal carotid artery and then here you can see that it runs inside then it will supply nasociliary now which will is supplying molar muscle also it will be supplying pupillary dilator fibers so this too will be supplied by sympathetic system as well as it gives vasoconstrictor fiber to the face and when that is damaged you get anhydrosis dilator pupillary fibers when they are damaged you get meiosis molar muscle is being affected you get ptosis so these are the three main component which you come across and along with that you get some other finding also so depending upon the lesion this is one lesion where, where you can get in pons you can get at the level of the spinal cord you can get in a neck that is in a along with the carotid artery common carotid artery this is common carotid artery and then it runs along with the internal carotid so you can get damage there or you can get damage in a orbit or we call orbital fossa this is a diagram if you are interested at what level what are the common causes where you get the damage say in a hypothalamus can be because of tumor or can be because of stylopharyngiomas brain stem because of stroke or wallenberg syndrome tumors or demyelinating disorders in spinal cord because of tumor myelitis demyelinating disorders or syringomyelia and at in the neck can be because of thyroid tumors if you come across in the inter, close to the internal carotid artery because of dissection this is on the side of the pituitary fossa in cavernous sinus tumors thrombosis carotid artery aneurysms or pituitary tumors can produce a damage and along the internal carotid artery dissection of internal carotid artery aneurysm or thrombosis you can get a damage outside at the superior cervical ganglia also because of damage during surgery or maybe because of any lesions like apical lung lesions pancreas tumor subclavian artery aneurysm or mediastinal mass or maybe because of thyroid tumors etc this is a big list this all are different etiology and main you can get even a damage in cavernous sinus all those things are mentioned here you can get a damage there also so these are all the different areas where you can get damage if you get the damage right from first order neuron that is hypothalamus to cervical spine that is first order neuron from cervical spine up to superior cervical ganglia that is second order neuron and then from superior cervical ganglia till it supplies dilator pupillae molar muscle and face that is called third order neuron so you can get damage at any one of those sites so first order neuron brain stem disease 
particularly vascular etiology, demyelinating disease, spinal cord, syringomyelia and tumor. Preganglionic or we call second order neuron, particularly in intrathoracic lesion like Pankos tumor or aneurysm. And in the neck, maybe because of thyroid gland or during surgery or traumatic injury, etc. And postganglionic is very frequently at the level of cavernous sinus and close to the pituitary fossa, which can be cavernous sinus thrombosis, mass, tumors, etc. Or internal carotid artery disorders like aneurysm, dissection, thrombosis, all those etiology, which we have already mentioned. Again, same repetition. Central, preganglionic, postganglionic, and miscellaneous can be damaged at the level of brachial plexus. And sometimes, still you cannot identify, we label that as idiopathy. So these are first order neurons damage, second order neuron damage, and third order neuron damage. Just at your leisure time, you can go through. We already mentioned all these findings, meiosis, ptosis, anhydrosis, anophthalmus, flushing of the face, absent spinal reflex. Pupil, do not dilate with cocaine 4% drops. And there is a reverse ptosis where you can see slight elevation of lower eyelid. These are all the findings you can come across. So symptoms will be different in the size of the pupil, drooping eyelid and good number of time person may be asymptomatic. Anisocoria is dark illumination is more than light illumination. Myotic pupil, mild ptosis, reverse ptosis, anhydrosis and anophthalmus. And you can see sometimes little difference in the color of iris that is heterochromia. We have got one. You can see here, there's a little different color that is called heterochromia. And there may be increased amplitude of accommodation and ocular hypotony. These are the additional findings which you can see sometimes. So this is already mentioned before. This is already mentioned here. Ptosis, meiosis, classical features and when you add the drops cocaine drops no pupillary dilatation even 1% hydroxy amphetamine will be helping you to differentiate the different lesions the dilation of the hornous pupil is due to denervation or hypersensitivity of the postsynaptic alpha 1 receptor in a pupillary dilator muscle so in a case of first and second order neurons, source pupillary dilatation. So if you get the damage, still the other fibers are intact. That is third order neurons are intact. And that will happen with hydroxy amphetamine. So in third order neurons damage, there will be no pupillary dilatation. This will help you. So this test can help you to differentiate between third order neuron damage and first and second order neuron damage. So if you get dilatation, means there is a lesion of first order or second order neuron, means in the brain stem, right from the pons to cervical spine and second order neuron from cervical spine till cervical ganglia. So that if you get a damage and if you do the test with hydroxyampetamine, you will get dilatation of pupil. But if you don't get dilatation, it is a postganglionic damage that is a third order neuron damage. So that will be helping you. So evaluation can be done by cocaine test, by hydroxyampetamine test, we have already mentioned. And you can go for neuroimagination like MRI of brain or of neck or you might require CT angio to find out arterial disorders. So cocaine drops and ampetamine drops will help you to differentiate between first order, second order neuron and also to differentiate third order neuron damage. So meiosis, ptosis and anhydrosis are peculiar features. So meiosis, ptosis and no sweating is typical features of Horner syndrome. So this is what is showing you 
that when you add a cocaine drops there is no dilatation there is no dilatation but when you add apraclonidine there is a dilatation this tells you that there is probably the third order neuron is intact you can see here hydrosis is taking place here there is no hydrosis pinpoint pupil ptosis and you can even make out that lower eyelid it is slightly elevated that is called reverse ptosis you can see here pinpoint pupil ptosis this lower eyelid is slightly elevated that is reverse ptosis so partial ptosis meiosis pupil does not dilate with cocaine and hydrosis ciliospinal reflex is absent and you can see even heterochromia you can see two different colors that is quite common so in congenital corners you can have heterochromia so any socoria this on the side where there is damage it will be a pinpoint pupil with ptosis so we will have a pinpoint pupil with ptosis you can see here pinpoint pupil with ptosis here on this side pinpoint pupil with ptosis so you can see that pinpoint pupil or we say meiosis here you can see this side meiosis this side meiosis this is meiotic and you can see the difference between the two and ciliospinal reflex you try to elicit that will be absent so you have to pinch the skin in the neck and look for the dilation of the pupil which will not be in case of horner syndrome so that we call so while testing that you give a noxious stimulus to the skin and look for the pupillary dilatation and if there is no pupillary dilatation we call that ciliospinal reflex is absent so in dark pupil should be pinpoint and in light bright light are sorry in dark the pupil should dilate it does not dilate and in a bright light it should constrict so that you can look for ptosis meiosis and nasal stuffiness and discharge may be seen in congenital horners you can get heterochromia so facial anhydrosis absence of facial flushing on one side it is also called as harlequin sign and super sensitivity of the denervated blood vessels with resultant vasoconstriction so that is the response which is seen so on one side sweating will be absent you can see clearly harlequin swine absence of flushing of the face on the affected side so on the affected side you will see that you can see here this is little sweating is there you will have absence of flushing of the face and that is very peculiar and again here also you can see that this is absence of sweating and flushing of the face on one side there is a flushing of the face you can clearly see this side is there is flushing of the face you can see clearly and that is given a name harlequin sign if there is a involvement of the carotid artery dissection the person will have horner syndrome cerebral and retinal ischemia and this is very commonly seen pain on one side horner's and tia this is quite common good number of time it is misdiagnosed as a cluster headache so pain on one side of the head horner's with 
retinal ischemia or TIA. In a pancos tumor, very frequently person will have a shoulder and arm pain, weakness of the muscles of the hand and along with Horner syndrome. And it can be diagnosed by X-ray chest and CT chest. There is one more called Ridder syndrome where Horner's with pain in a distribution of six cranial nerve caused by neoplasm compressing the trigeminal nerve and you have to differentiate from the cluster headache. As far as investigation is concerned, main important part is a history physical examination and to look for the signs like meiosis, partial ptosis and hydrosis and anophthalmos. These are the very common and then you can do the test with cocaine 4% drops or with hydroxyamphetamine drops. CT scan, MRI, CT angio, MRI angio will be helpful to find out the etiology and site of damage. LP and CSF examination is very rarely required. In case of Pancos tumor, suspicion of disease in the chest, that is superior mediastinum, you can go for X-ray chest or CT, CT scan, CT chest. And sometimes you might require to confirm the diagnosis FNAC or biopsy. You can see here, this is Pancos tumor. Treatment will depend upon the etiology. These are some of the slides which shows you if there is a combination of ptosis, meiosis and anhydrosis, how you proceed. So you confirm the test by pharmacological test with cocaine and apracolidine test and you can differentiate between the two. That is first order neuron and second order neuron, third order neurons. And pharmacological testing not available. You can go for the clinical finding like acute onset of pain, trauma or malignancy. So if that is there, then you can go for CT or you can go for clinical examination or you can go for brain or cervical MRI. That should be the way you should proceed. Complications will depend upon the etiology. Now I'll show you three findings of Horner syndrome. Sorry, this is not working at present. Sorry, it is not working. So, I'll end my lecture here. Thank you very much for listening. And thank you very much for taking out time. This is very frequently asked in your theory. Maybe ask in your practical side. And you might see once in a while a case in your everyday practice.